Eric. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, well, how do I run into you here in Cambridge? I follow man? you around. You didn't know that? Yeah. Oh, you're my groupie now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we got a lot of them on, on nine. And we're here with Simon Peyton Jones again. Hi there, Charles. How you doing? Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Yeah. So, uh, what's going on? So, um, so one of the things I've been thinking about recently is we've got this, uh, uh, this big picture going on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a picture. It's like this. We've got, um, uh, so here we've got programming languages. And we've got uh, ones that are uh, uh, useful. Useful. And here's ones that are useless. Okay. <laughs> and here's ones that are uh, um, unsafe. And here's ones that are safe. Okay. By, by, and by which I mean safe, I mean very limited effects. Effects, I mean, um, I mean side effects. Side effects. Limited, uh, controlled effects. And this is any effects anywhere. And this is this up here is C, right? Okay. Um, and down here is Haskell. But actually, also here is C Sharp and Java and C++. Pretty much every mainstream language is in this useful but unsafe camp. Now, let's talk about that for a second. Even C Sharp? Oh, sure. Uh -huh. C Sharp. Uh, the, uh, the, what does a C Sharp program do? It's an imperative program. It's a sequence of steps. Every line says, do this, then do this, do this. When you call a method, often it has no arguments and no results. It may have some arguments, but no result. And why? Because, it, um, because its sole reason for calling it is to have an effect on the world, to change the state of something. Interesting. So it's fundamentally effectful. Okay. Um, so, and this is a very powerful computing paradigm. It's what our machines do, after all. It's incredibly useful in practice. Right? Absolutely. So what, we're, what we'd like to... No, what we'd like to go is here. This is Nirvana, <laughs> right? Where we're both safe and useful. Okay. Right. And and uh, the real world has been gradually moving in this kind of direction in all sorts of ways over time. Um, in fact, um, becoming more and more controlled. I think uh, transactional memory is a good example of this, where we want to say, well, inside a transaction, it would really be so much better if we could uh, we could control, uh, we could make sure that we don't do, say, arbitrary input-output. That's arbitrary effects. Mm -hmm. Because inside a transaction, you've got to make sure you don't launch the missiles until you've seen a cons consistent view of memory. So that's an example of what I mean by limited effect. Uh -huh. Or you might like a procedure, and you might like to say, I know this procedure uh, is a pure function. In fact, some languages maybe even are getting pure annotations. Compilers can do a lot with those kind of things. Mm. So this so. is like where link is also moving, right? right. Where right. You Good. Exactly, so, because so. In, in expressions, in the, the query comprehensions, you want to be there. You want to have no side effects, because then the <laughs> compiler can do much more optimizations or you know, send it to SQL, where you, know, you don't know what happens there. So, so indeed, SQL yep. is, is a language. Like yep. so, so there's little sub-languages that have become mm -hmm. quite mainstream and very useful that have controlled effects. But at the moment, they're all embedded in large languages that have unrestricted effects. But nevertheless, there's, there's, a, there's a big trend. The more, and, the, and the more we think about parallelism, too, the more we need to control effects. Because if you have unrestricted effects, you do things in parallel, mm -hmm. then, uh, then you don't know what the result of the program is going to be. Absolutely. So from the other end of the, end of the world, these, as you know, us sort of geeky Haskell guys have started with completely useless language, right? Because they have no effect. In the end, a program with no effect, there's no point in running it, is there? You know, you have this black box, and you press go, and it says, uh, you know, it, it gets hot, but there's no output, right? Why did you run the program? The reason to run a program is to have an effect. Sure. Right? So, but nevertheless, we put up with that embarrassment for many years until we figured out <laughs> how to combine in a single language, a single programming metaphor, we can combine effectful computations and effect-free ones without making them pollute each other. Interesting. Right? The type system keeps them apart. So, that, so, so we've been working from that direction. Everyone else is working from this direction. But there's a lot of cross-fertilization going on here. Mm -hmm. right? We got the idea of STM, the transactional memory stuff, sure. from the imperative world. Mm -hmm. We uh, thought about it over here and added retry and all else and are busy putting that back into the imperative world. Nice. There's quite a bit of cross-fertilization going on. Mm -hmm. well, or the other one with the comprehensions, right? That came from here or that came from there right. to here and back. Right. right? right. So now uh, you know, Haskell's comprehensions are kind of, you know, getting ideas from the C-sharp and VB comprehensions and putting them in Well, there. let's talk about that briefly, comprehensions, definition. Oh, the comprehensions, the, the, the query expressions. Okay. In, 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 and the comprehensions is the geeky word that comes from, you know, from Haskell. Um, so, yeah. So, Simon just wrote a paper um, with Phil Wattler where they kind of extend the Haskell comprehensions with order by and group by, which is something that we introduced in C-sharp and VB. Outstanding. Where we took the idea, original idea from comprehensions from Haskell. So. It's a kind of nice, uh, you know, way of, of 
Yep. So here's a Haskell comprehension, which you read the list of all x such that x is drawn from x's and x is bigger than zero. <laughs> and in link or SQL, you might say from x's select x where, or something like this, and where, and here's a filter expression. <laughs> but then, then these guys, you know, they, so over here in the in the link world, uh -huh. um, and the, indeed in the SQL world, we've at the, there's also order by and group by. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're busy as, that's right, a whole bunch of other stuff here. And we're busy figuring out, maybe we can steal some ideas from over here and put them back into Haskell. Absolutely. So it's a very, very productive um, sort of synergy it's going on here. This stuff started out in mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, who's this guy? <laughs> Who are you, sir? I'm Butler Lampson. All right, another fellow that's researcher. Right. That is right. Oh, that must be he is a great god before whom we bow. So. Yes, yes, yes. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. Let's, 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 let's see the bows in sure. action here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm short circuiting a lot by saying Haskell here, right? But Haskell's predated by lots of other languages, which is predated by mathematics. Yeah. And now we have to go and judge a competition. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Mathematicians wouldn't recognize this ordered by and group by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will. Once we put it back into Haskell, they will. Mathematicians will or just sure. Haskell? <laughs> Outstanding. Okay. How are we doing here? Hey, Fabian. Yeah. Charles, you've stolen my judges. So, <laughs> the judges now need a judge. But what a great panel of judges. Oh, yes. Outstanding. Very outstanding panel. Quick Always brief. great to talk to you oh, guys. Quick, quick for them, and then we're going sure. to start again. So, 